I'm Amanda Ferguson outside of Earl Grey Senior Public School where staff here have become so frustrated with kids doing stuff like this on their cell phones in the classroom. This is the magic of Snapchat, by the way, that they've taken the extraordinary step of banning the devices, not only in the classroom, but the hallways as well. Be honest, how much are you going to miss your cell phone? A lot, probably. Yeah, a lot. But it'll, I feel like my grades will go up. And that is one big reason why Earl Grey Senior Public School is making the call to go cell phone free in all of its classrooms and hallways. And understandably, some students have some hang ups about the decision. I find that like it's a little unfair because some kids aren't using it in bad ways. The principal sending a letter home to parents this week notifying them of the cell phone ban, saying it's to quote, minimize distractions in the classroom and reduce inappropriate uses of the devices during the school day. A lot of people like use it for social media when they're not supposed to. And that's not all. On top of a ban in the classrooms and hallways, during the lunch hour when phones are allowed, there's no social media, no texting, and no taking or viewing photos or videos. Not only the fact that it's a, a distraction in many cases, but also there, there had been some incidents of inappropriate or negative use uh, of the cell phone, so they decided in consultation with parents just to uh, make sure they're not being used in the school. The Toronto District School Board allows each individual school or principal to create their own cell phone policies. The Catholic Board, meanwhile, has students sign this agreement that they will comply with the acceptable use guidelines. What does this mean in terms of logistics? Because you know every kid's going to walk in with one of these. Is it putting in a basket in the front of the class of the day or like a coat check? What, how do it work? It's likely just going to include leaving your cell phone in your bag in your locker or something like that. Parents, meanwhile, are being asked to go old school to get in touch with their kids during the day, and that is to simply call the office. Does it make you at all nervous if something were to happen to school that you wouldn't be able to reach him quickly? No, not at all. I've, I've never had an issue with that. The move getting a lot of likes from parents, from kids, only trepidation. I don't know if anyone's going to really follow it at first c until like they really like start actually putting the phones in the office. What's it going to seem like? I don't know. Like how it's going to turn out. The ban takes effect here at Earl Grey Senior Public School on February 21st. Well, now that you've gotten the message here, it is time to send it over to Stella with why disconnection may be harder for some than others. People are addicted to their phones at school, work and in their social lives. It's so bad it could be affecting your health. I want to say I could stop any time, but that's like with alcohol. People say, oh, I can stop any time, but I don't think that's true. You know, I think uh, Actually, like, if I tried stopping for, I tried it before, like, tr uh, stopping for a week or something, and, like, I couldn't. You were checking your phone during this addicted. interview. I, yeah, very true, very true. Are you addicted to your phone? Most definitely. If misplacing your smartphone or losing battery supply makes you feel like this, Crying face, the real crying face, like the the, the, the full on, the streaming yeah. one, yeah, yeah. Okay. the wing eyes one, because like the phone's just convenient, right? So it's, it's, not that we're addicted to our phones, but addicted to convenience, I think. Oh, that blue one, you know, the emoji with the blue <laughs> face, and you look look like you're about to faint. Is that got a steam coming out of the nose? Oh, yeah, <laughs> steam coming out of the nose. Okay, you might be addicted. People begin by using their cell phone a little bit. Uh, but then they need to use it more and more and more to get the same sort of hit from it. It's an addiction just like many others. It follows the same sort of profile. Stephen Jordans is a professor of psychology and he says smartphone addiction is not yet a recognized illness, but internet addiction is and they are very similar. And in fact, when we kind of take that another step further, they, there's studies that show that for 35% of the people, when they wake up in the morning, they think about their cell phone. And that compares to 10% who think about their significant other. Some other signs that prove you may be hooked on your phone, losing focus of things around you, feeling anxious when there is a poor cell connection. Believing the phone has rung or vibrated when it has not. So literally being so primed to hear these things that you're even hearing them when they're not happening. It really becomes a worry if it starts to put things at risk, like if you've gotten in trouble at work or in relationships, um, you know, you're supposed to be out on that dinner and having this nice connection with somebody, but you keep checking your phone. And if that person is actually becoming offended, uh, that's again another tip off. For a full list of smartphone addiction signs, you can go to our website citynews.ca. Signing out for a few minutes, I'm Stella Cuisto, City News.